Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over potential energy. I'm going to give you some terms and definitions on this slide here, and then we'll go over and we'll do a couple quick examples to see how it all works together. But potential energy, the quick definition for potential energy is stored energy. When you increase something's potential energy, you're storing energy and you're storing work in that object. For example, we're going to talk mostly in this video about um, mechanical potential energy, and we have a couple examples here. A spring, when you squeeze a spring or you extend a spring, when you load a bow, like in a bow and arrow, when you stretch a rubber band, you're applying a force over a distance. And when you apply a force over a distance, you're doing work and you're increasing the potential energy of those objects. Okay? So you store energy in, you can store energy in these objects by applying a force over a distance. And Potential energy is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. It's defined only by its magnitude, and the unit for uh, potential energy, just like kinetic energy work, is joules. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about gravitational potential energy. The symbol for gravitational potential energy is U, and gravitational energy is the energy is the property of a system of objects. You have to have more than one object. A single object cannot have potential energy. A single object can have kinetic energy, but a single object cannot have potential energy. And usually we say that the definition for gravitational potential energy is the energy of position. And we talk about an object's position relative to the surface of the Earth or the height above an Earth's surface or some surface on the Earth, like a table or a floor or a top of a building. And we reference, we have to have a reference point because when you calculate potential energy, you're usually calculating the change in potential energy not the absolute potential energy, but how much the energy has changed from one location to another. And the reference point is usually the place where the object started. And the potential energy is not path dependent, which I'll try to show you in what I mean by that in this slide right here. First of all, we're going to talk about gravitational potential energy. <clears throat> the most common equation that you've probably seen for gravitational potential energy is P equals mgh, the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. Okay, and that works in most cases, but I, first of all, I want to point out that PE is not the official symbol for gravitational potential energy. It's actually U, capital U. And as I said, when you calculate potential energy, you're usually calculating the change in potential energy, delta U. The change in potential energy is equal to mg, the mass, times the acceleration due to gravity, times the change in the height or the change in the y position of the object. Okay, so we're going to use this equation to calculate our change in potential energies of this object, which has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. And in the first case, we're going to take this object and we're going to raise it up one point, oops, not 1.5, we're going to raise it up 0 0.45 meters. So the change in the position, the change in the y, the change in the height is plus 0 0.45 meters because we're going to use this equation to calculate the change in potential energy, and we're going to use this surface, the top of the table, as our reference surface where the potential energy of the object is zero because the position of the object is zero. This is what this would be zero on the y-axis, and we're increasing the height. We're increasing, we're moving in the positive y direction, 0 0.45 meters. So all we have to do is take the mass, 1.5 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the change in the y, and that tells us that from this surface to this surface, we have increased the potential energy of that object by 6.6 .6 joules. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, we could have also, of course, taken this object and lowered it back down to the ground surface. And once again, we can calculate the change in the potential energy, delta U equals mg delta y. Well, what is the mass is the same, the acceleration due to gravity is the same. What is the change in y? Well, it started here. The table it says here is 0 0.85 meters tall, but we lowered the object from zero. We lowered it. We decreased its height. We decreased its uh, location on the y-axis by 0 0.85 meters. That means that in order to calculate the change in potential energy, it's 1.5, same mass, same acceleration due to gravity, but it's minus 0 0.85 because you should kind of notice when you lower something down, you decrease its potential energy. So we decrease its potential energy by 12.5 joules, or there was a change in potential energy of 12.5 joules. Okay? That's all starting from this point. Now, a third case is we could take the object from here now and move it up to this location. 
and we can calculate the potential energy. So if we take the object from the floor and we move it up to this location, using the same equation, now we can calculate the change in the potential energy. But in this case, of course, the change in potential energy would be from this surface right here. So the simplest thing to do is to take your Y position and move it down here to the floor, to the ground surface. Now we have our mass is 1.5 kilograms still. Acceleration due to gravity is still 9.8. But the change in the Y, the change in the height of the object, is 0 0.85 plus 0 0.45 which is 1.3 meters, so we multiply all those together and we get that the change in the potential energy of the object from the ground surface is 19.1 joules, okay, by multiplying the mass times g times delta y. Now you'll also notice that we could have gotten that same value, 19.1, by adding together the change in the potential energy from the surface, from the floor to the tabletop, which would be plus in this case because we're moving up, plus 12.5 joules, and then from the tabletop to here, 6.6 .6 joules. If you add 6.6 .6 and 12.5, you also get 19.1 joules. So you got to decide where your zero reference or where you're referencing your change in potential energy from. Okay, got to pick that carefully. That's, I would say, is the, the tricky thing maybe about potential energy and changes in potential energy. Now, before we end, I just want to go through and talk quickly about the change in potential energy and work. When you apply a force to an object, an applied force, you can change the potential energy because you do work on that, on that object. So the work done by an applied force, when it changes the position of the object in the y direction, the work done by that force is going to be equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. And I'm going to show you in this slide how this quantity, the work done, is equal to the change in potential energy. So we're going to use our work equation. Our work equation is Fd cosine theta, the force that is applied the times the distance over which that force is applied times the cosine of theta, theta being the angle between the displacement and the force. And that is going to be equal to the equation which I just showed you on the previous slide for our change in potential energy, mg delta y. Okay, so I'm going to show you that these two quantities are equal to each other and therefore the work that is done by an applied force is equal to the change in the potential energy. Okay, so let's do something. We're going to move this object up. When we move this object up, we have to apply a force to it. That's this force right here. Okay, so the force is the applied force. Well, what? how big is the applied force? Well, if we raise the object at a constant velocity, we know that the applied force is equal to the force due to gravity. If we're raising something up at a constant velocity, there's no acceleration. Those forces have to be balanced. So the applied force is equal to the gravitational force, and the gravitational force can be calculated by taking the mass of the object and multiplying it by the acceleration due to gravity. So this force right here is the applied force. The applied force is equal to the gravitational force, and the gravitational force is equal to mg. So we can substitute in this equation for f. We can substitute in mg, and there's our mg. Now, what about the distance? The distance that we raise the object is the change in the height or the change in the y. So we raise that object some distance, delta y. So for the distance, we can just substitute in delta y. So now we have mg delta y. What about cosine theta? Well, theta, we said, is the angle between the displacement vector and the applied force. Well, the angle between those is zero because they're pointing in the same direction, up in the y direction, and they're parallel to each other. So if those two vectors are parallel to each other and they're pointing in the same direction, then theta is zero. So the cosine of theta is what we need, and the cosine of zero is one. So it would be mg times delta y times one. We wouldn't write the one in there. So you can see we converted the work equation, which is fd cosine theta. We changed that into mgy, mg delta y. And you can see on the other side, we already have mg delta y. So there you can see the work done is equal to the change in potential energy. Okay? So that tells us that if we change the potential energy of an object, change the gravitational potential energy of an object, the change is equal to the amount of work you do. Or if you do work on an object, whether it's negative or positive, okay, the work done by the applied force is equal to the change in potential energy. All right? So there you go. We talked about the definitions and the terms. We did an example of how you calculate the change in potential energy, and I showed you how potential energy and work, 
are related to each other and that the amount of work done is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. All right, that was a lot. Hopefully that was 10 minutes or maybe a little less. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can give me a thumbs up or a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.